uh, we did win a quite decent game here. I think çok güzel bir oyun kazandık. I think we did win a great game, by the way. So not entirely sure about the theory at all, but let's have a look. So now, um, yeah, I think this end game was quite technical, Reador. Um, you realized once again that um, the king domination was quite important, and also bishop against knight. Okay, this end game was uh, goes to show welcome. So I think um, this is my actually preference in blitz games that I play myself this opening particularly. Uh, I'm just gonna take some coffee in the meantime we're gonna have a look at the theoretical battle and the position because this g6 move I didn't analyze this move so much in detail actually this is interesting that recently I will be analyzing this g6 move also uh, because this is actually one of the moves I was curious recently like uh, two days ago I I was thinking that okay there are moves like the old line is a6 and then I play myself with bishop g4, which is not well known by many players, but actually it's considered to be a good position for white after hg4, knight e5. But I'm actually having so much experience in blitz, so I'm just very comfortable, especially in blitz, you can play anything. But um, this particular line, I'm thinking that I have a go quite uh, good knowledge. So at least knowing the ideas for an opening is the most important, first of all. And this is one of the okay this is the main line actually this is something that made me happy so i played the main line actually and magnus carlsen played this against vladimir kramnik that's so impressive isn't it now i feel like playing like a world champion this is how it feels great but um we will of course analyze the continuation after the opening because there are so many strong opponents like wishy anand against kramnik carlsen against kramnik swidler against kramnik seems like kramnik did mate <laughs> made this choice in 2009 he played this position several times but i certainly have a feeling that this g6 line is tricky but I'm not really sure if you really enjoy this positions in general but there has to be a good reason if vladimir kramnik is playing this he should have come up with some certain um, conclusion that the position is quite complex maybe because the structure is not something that we get used to. We used to see a lot of e6 positions, but then easy to break in the center with d5. But in this certain position, I'm not entirely sure if break with the d5. There's no break, actually. So pushing d5 and gaining space might not be that great. Because it might transpose to some Grunfeld lines. And uh, I'm uh, being, a, being a Grunfeld player myself, I consider, you know, this early d5... Or later in the in the position d5 is not going to give me too much of a pleasure uh, from the white side it doesn't seem that good for black when Kamnik lost it three times exactly <laughs> that is the true fact i i forgot about this to be honest thanks for reminding me that statistically it's yeah exactly so it seems like he just was um, at that time inspired for some reason to play this variation but it turned out to be that this is horrible for him right so that wasn't um, a good time for him probably to test his openings i'm not sure if he did play this in the classical chess or did just play in the rapid it might be rapid games though if you insist playing the same line over and over again and lose three games it means that you might have tested those games not in classical chess maybe but we'll, we'll discuss this. I'm just going to come back. But this setup seems to be like a very large uh, space advantage for white. So basically, you're just enjoying the position. And of course, uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about it. So let me just grab some coffee. And uh, yeah, we can talk about it. Basically. So actually Reoder has a very good point that Kramnik did lose his games. So let's see Bishop G7, 
Queen b3 is one of the moves that is rarely played in this position. Bishop b2, of course, this is quite natural. I mean, everybody plays this, but I just wanted to ensure that I don't get into any kind of theoretical um, um, battle here. So queen b3 is quite safe because if you capture, I capture back. Like in the London system games, you just... That's quite possible. He did also lose it against two world champions and other really... Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean... I can say that Kramnik, after beating Gary Kasparov, he played um, chess seriously until Magnus Carlsen became the world champion. And I certainly do believe that Kramnik um, lost his motivation of playing for, you know, for uh, being world rank number one anymore because, I mean, younger players have more ambitions to, they are more ambitious to actually play more intensive chess. But for a person with a long career like Kramnik, they lose uh, their um, inspiration of uh, or motivation, not inspiration because they are always inspired players. But here in this particular line, I certainly do believe that if we analyze with computer a bit, bishop b3, I mean, this is like um, the best move, black hand, probably considering the fact that knight b4 is the next move. So I'm almost forced to capture because if I play bishop e2, maybe that's also possible. Nice. Knight b4, and you have to castle short. But if you just take on b6, ab and g4, bishop b6, I mean, this is also playable. But to be honest, like, once you get this pawn structure, a file open, I think black is just doing fine. Anyways, knight a6 was a very interesting choice. So the game was actually a blitz game from the World Championship in 2009. Yeah, that's most probably real door. I agree. It should not be played in classical chess because this is just so easy for white to take control of the game. You're simply just pushing and your opponent is out of ideas. It's just, you know, squeezing the position. And uh, actually this was a quite uh, a computer like knight d2, but I preferred knight g5. And certainly knight f6 is not an easy move to admit uh, once you realize that your bishop is uh, out of squares. So bishop actually has only two squares which um, uh, are quite possible to play, uh, let's say. Uh, bishop f5 and bishop c2. I'm not sure which one is the best. But uh, certainly, I was um, I already calculated this. So rook f c one, bishop b three, rook a three, and the rook is trapped. So bishop is trapped. Sorry. So um, here you ha you just lose a tempo and you help my rook to improve. But I'm not sure how much improvement is this to having a rook on c file. Anyways, it's a it's a good move to have. Maybe my rook on f one is better now. Who knows? In any case, I played f four. And now uh, it's equalized, so I should have played rook d1. It's a prophylactic move against e5 and c5 breaks. So I understand it perfectly. It's a blitz match, so I'm not going to go too deep. But rook a3 was the best move in the position, and I was really expecting a5. So this a5 is a what a interesting idea to play, right? You simply block all the pawns on the light squares. And now it's the only chance for white to centralize your king in the position, but still. It's quite challenging because uh, black has a clear idea of blockade um, on the dark squares. And the king will come to e3, rook d8. But um, we'll come back to it. So take, take, b4, rook e3. And I'm certainly playing the best possible way. So rook d3 exclamation point. So this is forcing exchange. So this is actually seemingly like, um, yeah, from the same Blitz Championship. I, I guess the same, to be honest, because some players only come up with some opening variation that they decide to play, basically, in the, in the tournament, and they do it. It doesn't matter whether it goes well or bad, good or bad for them, but they just insist playing it over and over again. But seems like Vladimir Kramnik's decision was quite experimental, nothing more than that. And rook d3. And now we go into this end game. I'm, I'm sure that I didn't play the most accurate way here, but let's see. Knight d6, c5, 
and knight f7. Now it's important to fix these pawns on the light squares and also these pawns are under light squares. So I start with forcing the knight into worst possible square. And now the idea is to centralize your king to e5 and if you just achieve that you're simply gonna block every single pawn on the light squares. And this is the key plan for white. So let's see, g5, not in a great move, but an early move maybe. I should have maybe just played uh, king f2, but in any case. So now king f2, e5. And um, this is where I was confused a bit. Even though I like a5, I was a little bit worried about the counter chances of my opponent. Um, f5, g takes f5, bishop takes f5, knight c6. So let's um, have a look at that. Okay, now the, the end game is winning. I wasn't 100% uh, sure on this. There is a certain reason for that. Actually, I have the opposition and I have a spare tempo. So you see how important this spare tempo in the position is. So let me turn the engine off because I want to show what particularly is important here is that your king is out of squares. So you, you can just grab uh, on e5 and the game is lost. Because it's not uh, only that, but also my king uh, continues to invade all important squares in the position. So there is like um, a lot to invade in the position, a lot more to discover here with take. And you simply win without any counter chance. But how I did play was also difficult. So let's see, I tried to keep the bishops on the board. And this move was quite instructive. So I'm just improving my position considering the fact that this b7 pawn is more important than the b4 pawn itself so when you see this position particularly seems like this is one of the most um, inter interesting uh, positions now bishop d3 bishop c4 and king e4 and i certainly played the best possible way so bishop a2 and now my opponent is in six one So my opponent is in Sukhswank now, you cannot move the knight, you cannot move the king because if you move the king there's king d6 and king e6 or bishop e6 simply and you are completely winning the game. Alright, so bishop g6 and uh, this is completely winning. I, I'm really happy to see this kind of an achievement uh, I got from the game but okay let's continue with some more games now. At least we can play until the end of level 2 if we manage to get to 2500, that's an achievement. So I hope we did uh, clear the level 2. 